Hey guys, my name is Nibiri and it's time for another kicking of the week. And today I'm going to be talking about some issues that you can face while you're creating kicks and of course how you can solve them. So here we are in the project of this kick and the final kick sounds like this. And I'm really happy with how this turned out, but like I said, there were some issues that I was facing and I just want to show you how you can overcome these issues if you stumble upon them. So today we're going to be mainly focusing on the punch because that's where my issues came when I was creating this kick. And well, I think we've all just been there. We created a nice uh, punch and a nice till and they work together, but they don't just really sound as powerful as you would want them to be. So I was working on the punch and the punch was working um, quite well. As you can see, it's two layers and these layers are just uh, working nicely together. But when I play this, you're going to notice that they just kind of lack power. And I had to solve that. And the way I'm going to solve this is by adding a click layer and maybe some compression. Let me just show you the first thing that I did after I had this punch, but it just lacked some power. Um, the first thing I did is I just applied an EQ and this EQ just shifts some more of the focus on the parts of the sound where you want it to be. So we're creating a little bit more uh, mids and just some a little bit more highs. And honestly, a lot of stuff can just be fixed by a little bit of EQ. It's already sounding a lot brighter and a lot more focused. Um, but after that, I just still felt it lacked a little bit of click. So I took an old uh, punch layer, or well, an old, yeah, it's an old punch layer, and I just took only the uh, beginning of it. And the beginning of it sounds like this. So it's really a tiny click sound, but a tiny click sound can make a huge difference in the um, end. So what I did is I routed this to the other um, punch layers, uh, where we had the EQ over here. And then after that, I tried compressing it a little bit so that um, after the uh, peak, so after 14 uh, milliseconds, it would start compressing a tiny bit and just focus a little bit more on that click that I'm adding. Now it might be a tiny difference, but sometimes when you're having a good punch and you just need a little bit more power, you can try adding a click layer and after that maybe some distortion or some compression. So in the uh, grand scheme of things, when we take away that um, compression and uh, the extra layer, um, this kick sounds like this. And then if we add that compression and the extra layer, it's already gonna sound a lot more tight. So the second problem that you can be facing and that I wanna talk about is the transition from the punch into the tail. It's really important that your punch and tail work together nicely. And it often happens to me as well that I create a nice punch and a nice tail, but they just don't work together. Basically, you can hear this right now when I'm gonna loop this kick. It's just not sounding as fluent as you'd want it to be. It sounds okay, but it would be nice if there would maybe be a little bit more of a transition in between the um, punch and the tail. And the way I solved this was by adding two layers, one uh, punch layer, or tail punch layer, and one tail layer. And let me just talk a little bit about this uh, layer over here. This layer is basically just the punch, and I stretched it. And after stretching it, I'm putting it on the mixer channel. If we then just strip away all the effects on it, it just basically sounds like this. So it's not really that good, but it's just a nice um, kind of echoey sound from the resonance from our punch. Then I'm just um, applying EQ and this EQ is mainly focused on that resonance that we have in the punch. So it's just the same tone as the um, beginning of the punch. And after that, I'm distorting it and it's creating uh, this sound. And then taking away some of the lows is just helping um, because we want to have the lows of our kick playing over here. We don't want the rumble from the end of this punch uh, playing over the low end over there. So I'm taking away the lows and I'm gonna use this as a layer, slowly just fading this in so that it plays nicely with our punch and it just um, acts as a like an uh, in-between layer in between your uh, punch and your tail. <laughs> And 
And like this, you just uh, play around until it sounds nice to you. So right now we're having this sound and it sounds nice, but I still felt it needed something extra. And the way I would describe it is just by the um, tail kind of lacking behind the punch all the time. It doesn't really transform nicely from the punch into the tail. The tail just always comes a little bit behind that punch and that just doesn't sound that nice. Um, the way I tried to solve this was by um, taking some part of our kick tail and putting that underneath our punch. So if I mute our um, tail, we're having this part somewhere from the tail and we're going to put this into the uh, mixer channel and I'm distorting this. And if we mute our punch as well, basically I'm just using a tiny part of the tail. And by adding this tiny bit of crunch and just adding it in the right um, facing, so you might want to scroll through this a little bit until it sounds nice, um, you're already kind of introducing the tail into the uh, punch a little bit. And that just creates a smoother transition from the punch into your tail. Now, this punch didn't really have too much low end, so I um, kept the low end on this tail. I only um, distorted it over here, as you can see. It's quite harsh distortion, but nothing too special. But if I would have a finished punch with a nice tight low end, you might want to um, low cut this so that it doesn't interfere with the uh, low end of your um, punch. But in this case, it didn't really need it. So having these two extra layers, you're already just transforming and making that punch a little bit longer. And that just, make it e that just makes it easier to um, transition from your punch into your tail. And now if we turn on all these layers again, we're just having a nice kick that's having a nice transition from the punch into the tail. So to shortly sum it up, sometimes when your um, punch sounds nice but it lacks a click, you might want to add a little click layer from maybe a previous kick that you made. And sometimes when you have feel like the tail isn't really gluing together to the punch, you might want to stretch your punch a little bit and use that as a tiny layer in between over your uh, transition from the punch into the tail. And sometimes you want to add a little bit of a tail crunch on top of your punch so you can just introduce that tail a little bit. I hope you liked this and learned something from this and hopefully I'll see you back soon again. Cheers. <laughs>